more landforms, paint and scatter. So stay tuned and all will be revealed. Right, good evening everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now as you can see I've been fiddling <laughs> if you like <laughs> um, trying to work out the best way to have these lift out sections and what I've decided to do if you'll notice the tunnel portal comes out with this bit now and um, the reason for that is because I think when I attached it to that bit it really was jamming and it wasn't flowing or slotting into place quite as easy as I would have liked, to be honest. So I think it's easier to do that bit to that bit. And that's that's separate by itself, just this board and that tunnel portal. This bit is separate again. And obviously this bit is separate again. So there's three whole sections and all three of these can lift out and reveal the complete loop of track going around there. Obviously, the bridge is in, stuck to place, um, but it's not that wide, so it shouldn't really cause too much of an issue. Now, I still um, have to um, build, remove this bit of wall here, because it looks terrible anyway, um, and then build back towards the back scene um, with more hill countryside. And obviously, this will need to be built up here and all that sort of stuff. So there's a fair bit of work still to do. Um, you know, I've mentioned first um, few bits in the past or in the last video, I should say. Um, so I'll I'll start working through them, and um, we'll see. I might be able to get some grass down by the end of this video. We'll just have to wait and see. I am also um, looking. At the possibility of um, start designing the building I think it's going to be approximately three quarters the size um, of the original um, the original it's it was quite tight and it, it would just started to overlap it's not far off to be honest but I think three quarters will give it um, a, a decent size and a presence but nevertheless will fit the area better. So what I'll probably do is knock out a few rows of windows and sort of condense things a little bit. So it should it should look reasonably similar. That's the idea. Um, the other thing as well, these gantries here, um, I put them in in the hope that they'd be all right, but I am knocking them literally every time I come up here um, and putting this in, taking it out. So... I might just remove them. Look, you can see it's all floppy. That one's all floppy. Um, that one's stuck, actually. Um, that one's all floppy. That one's certainly all floppy. So it might be just safer to remove them and then stick them back in afterwards. So if you see if you see them in, a, in another clip when they're gone, don't be worried. They are coming back. Um, it's just I can't run the risk of breaking them. That's the thing. But anyway, I'll crack on and I'll show you what I've done shortly. Right. There we are. Welcome back. So, so far, you can now see that has now been extended or the top part has. And this is it slots over the top. If you, I'll just lift it out and you'll see exactly what I mean. If I do that. On camera without wrecking everything you can hopefully see that slots now literally just clips over the top of this I'm trying to do it one hand in it's not working <laughs> like that <laughs> so yes as I said before I've cut a butt end onto this part here just inside there and that bit literally just slots over the top that hides any gaps um, and when I come to put the foliage on, obviously I shall build the foliage up ever so slightly more at that point and vice versa on this side. So when it comes together, you won't see or hopefully you don't see any joints. Um, likewise, down this bit here and um, this bit here, you'll notice there is a humongous gap running down there. Um, so because this is on 
cork i might just put a bit of uh, gray board along there to hide that joint and then make this top a little bit wider so it actually sits on top of this piece and not leave that horrible gap um what I, I've decided whether I'm going to build this section out or whether I'm going to extend this one inwards. I don't know at the moment. I'll probably make this one wider, to be honest, because actually I've got to do this section so it makes sense. But, you know, I'll decide that in the next few days. Um, obviously, this piece here does need to be cut back ever so slightly so that it creates a more pleasurable view along the tracks. But that's easily done. But one thing has been bugging me, and that's these back scenes, which still exist here. If I bring you back here, we've got no back scene. Now, on the original version of the, of New Mills, the back scene ran all the way along here and came to an abrupt, abrupt end down there, pretty much where those brackets are, to be honest. So, obviously, I want to address that this time round and make things a little bit more in keeping. Um, my only problem being is obviously I've got to marry it up with whatever's that side, which is not too difficult. Um, it might be a case of building this up to match that and and vice versa. And also that little bit there, build that up to match this, you know, so whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm not happy with this surface at all. It doesn't look very tree like. So. It might be a case of make some little mock trees and just place them on like half trees, if you like, relief trees. But uh, that's all coming up very, very shortly. But I do need to remove this part to make it look an awful lot better than it does at the moment. But uh, watch this space. So anyway, that's coming up next. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Right, there it is then. So that looks a bit different, doesn't it? So you can see I've cut the sky off. This would be the new mill side, and this is where the twin tunnels are. So obviously I've got to build over that to make that sort of sort of come down there and seal that over. I should do that with tape and glue. Um, I might use hot glue on you know on that bit just to glue that bit back together, and then obviously papier mache over that bit. Um, I might have to remove some of this foliage just there along that line obviously so I can um, recreate it and then, I'll, and then this obviously will be built up with the tunnel in place so all this will be painted out so it'll just go um, brown grey that type of thing just to blend into the background so to speak but anyway I'll get that done I don't need to show you that it's literally just taping and papier mache which I've showed you in the past so i'll catch up with you shortly there we are that's that bit done and this is sopping wet as you can see from the, the sheen on it so i've now taken the slope down that end this is where the tunnels will be uh, because obviously it's a little bit more of a slope and um, i will pack it out with trees and you can see this side is i've removed a lot of the foliage so i can papier mache over the top but you can get the idea of where we're going with that now and uh I think it will look better um, with the, the foliage packed on top of it and then it will become its own scene, scenic break, which I think is a lot better for the layout, um, considering what I've done uh, next to New Mills. Now, I'll let this dry. Obviously, if I've got time to get it painted, I will and so on and so on. All right, I'll catch you shortly. I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update on the river scene because um, I haven't mentioned it for a little while. Now, I'm finding the water level is dropping. Now, I know, Andy from Moreland, you said this, but when I finished doing the original pour, the water level was around about just under halfway in that tube at the back of the scene. Now, it's now started to expose the stones again, so I can't run the risk of putting the ripples on the water because I don't know when this is going to be settled. No, I had to cut a slither out of the label there so you can see how much is in there. Now, if I put that bottle in, you'd think that it would only use a small fraction of that bottle. But you could see that actually, I know it's resettling, but I've used probably two thirds of it, pretty much. And it's still dropping. 
Um, I should only have used a third, if that, to be honest. So I, I can't say I'm impressed. Now, when I come to do the river for River Goit, I will be using resin um, because I think that's going to be a lot more stable. And not only that, this stuff would just take forever to put in. It would just, you know, you can only put in two millimetres. Whereas if you buy some deep pour type stuff, you can put in quite a bit more than that. Um, I'm only looking probably about 10 mil. Yeah, some 10, 12 mil, something like that. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that I thought I'd better show you. And um, hopefully at some point in the future, I'll get it finished. But who knows? Hey. Right, I thought I'd show you this scene as well. Um, I've obviously just taken each of the parts out and the um, unit that normally sits here on these little, on these brackets is over the other side of the room at the moment and you'll have seen the work I've done on that already. So, um, but you can see clearly how much access there is and obviously this unit will come out if I need it to. Um, I can get to all the points there's a point just there there's another one or another two just there and there's another one there so you know it's it's not difficult to get to any of the points really so it shouldn't really cause any issues but um what i'm going to do now is put this board back in and uh, i want to check the final heights underneath there because obviously a train has got to get through that gap where the cloud-like effects are and um, then I can glue these these blocks down and um, you know work out a way of uh, making that stay put just here as well so that this is all nice and lined up and then start thinking about putting that trim that I was talking about at the beginning of the video along there and um, making the edge of this wall here so there'll be like um, an edge running down here and a coping running all the way along right to the very end. Or well, certainly quite a way along there anyway. Right, so I will crack on with that and I'll show you shortly. Right, so there we have it. That's as much as I'm going to do for this video. So what have I achieved? Well, obviously, this section's been remoulded. That's been remoulded. And this section's had the sky removed, if you remember. In the previous clip, I explained that it wouldn't match up with what was going on down here. Um, I've painted this just to give it a base colour. And also, I've added another little bit just down there to this this section here which then encloses this section off but it also starts to direct the river back in this direction which is what it does do um, obviously i've started putting scatters all over it now or a scatter it's just sawdust colored green and so that's the very base layer so obviously there's loads more layers to go on top of that to build up the whole effect um, as as you do um, Obviously, there's certain things I'm not quite ready with yet. Um, this area here, there's a bit of a gap there, if you notice, a bit of a V-shaped gap. Now, what I can do is I might build that up, but I've obviously got to wait until this is dry and then put the two pieces together, make an end section from this sec this piece and and then mould that across. I can do that, um, which I possibly might actually, thinking about it, and just blend that back in. It might be the easiest answer to solve that problem. And um, this section down here, um, this piece here is quite low, as you can see. And it might be better, really, if I attach it to this piece, and then I can have the level coming in at the correct level as opposed to looking as if there's the earth is just falling away there. So <laughs> obviously this piece still needs to be built up, uh, but it's certainly getting there, isn't it? You can 
it's a lot more advanced than it was this time last week. So hopefully next week we might even have a little bit more uh, scatters on it. I'm not going to go too far without doing the resin pour because I think um, you can risk um, getting things all in it um, when you do that uh, with the resin pour. So I'd want it to be absolutely secure and firm before I even go anywhere close to that. So it's, uh, that'll be another week or so, maybe a little bit longer. I might even wait until after Warley for that. I don't know yet. We'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I will catch you again very, very soon here on Piccadilly. Take care of yourself. Bye for now.